G'day guys, in this video I'm going to change the crankshaft oil seal and the camshaft oil seal. So I'm going to change both of these while I'm doing the timing belt. With all the timing belt covers off you gain access to the crankshaft and camshaft oil seals. I suspect that I have a leak out of one if not both of those. So I'm going to change both anyway while I have everything apart because it's a pain to get access to it. Here we've got the crankshaft and camshaft oil seals. I will put the correct part numbers down in the description. I can't remember which is which at the moment, but I'll figure it out before I install them. And they just all came with these. Just appear to be seals of some sort. Um, I don't know where they go yet, but hopefully I'll figure it out as I go. All right, guys, there. So the tension is off the timing belt. Now at this stage, if you took your timing belt off to do your camshaft and crankshaft oil seals and you're gonna reuse this, just draw an arrow in white paint pen so you know which direction it went because it's supposed to reinstall it in the same direction. Because I'm using a new belt, I'm not gonna bother. So this is the camshaft. I've aligned these because I'm doing a timing belt change and taking them off so I don't want this to move. I've got a sprocket holder tool, which I'm going to use. And then you've got a 17 mil bolt in here to loosen, remove that. And then we've got to get the seal off and replace the seal, which I'll show you on the GoPro. Definitely try and avoid this turning at all uh, because we want to keep our timing. If you don't have a sprocket tool, you might be able to wedge a socket extension bar or something solid into here as you loosen this to stop this turning. Now, it might seem a little backwards, but I'm actually gonna clean everything before doing the oil seal, and I might be able to see better where the oil leak was coming from. And worst case scenario, I'll just have to clean it again once I do these seals. On the bottom is a similar situation, but it's a different style sprocket. So this is your crankshaft. This one, I'm gonna try get out with some pry bars, should hopefully just slide off. But again, I'm gonna clean all this sludge out and spray everything with brake cleaner after I remove this cabling here, because I don't wanna spray that with brake cleaner. Same thing, I'll have to try and get that oil seal out and then replace it. That sprocket tool is crap, it's not good enough. The sprocket tool didn't get deep enough to go on the arms of the cog wheel, which are at the back and it just kept slipping out. So I've got a half inch extension bar underneath the ratchet head there. And then where this engine mount used to be, I've packed with timber and cardboard, half inch breaker bar, 17 mil socket, and I've finally cracked it. Just so happened, I'll take this out. So you'll be able to see that half inch extension bar going into there. It just so happens that there is part of the engine block is molded in a manner that this fits in securely. So it can take a lot of pressure and it sort of sat in the perfect place when it was in top dead center. So that's worked out well. So I should be able to take this off now and have a go at getting this oil seal out. All right guys, so I've given the engine a spray with brake cleaner. I've tried to agitate as much as I could with an old paintbrush and then I've sprayed it again with brake cleaner. Now I'm using brake cleaner because it evaporates and just try to get it, try not to get it on painted surfaces. This is the camshaft with the pulley removed. This on the outside here is the rubber seal that I'm gonna try and remove. So this is potentially the origin of all that oil that dripped down and gets thrown around by the belt. I can't say for certain because this could also be from somewhere else that's just been thrown up behind the pulley. Before we take the seal out, we just want to take note of how far it is recessed behind the face. When we put the new one back in, we'll try and mimic that depth. So I'd say that's about two mil. Right guys, to get this oil seal out, I've drilled a small hole, making sure not to hit the face on the back. And I've just screwed a 20 mil screw in. So I'm gonna see if I can get my pliers on that and lever out the oil seal. So the part that's been drilled through is between these two lips here. Right, so there's the oil seal. So 
I've just wiped it down with a paper towel to try and clean any grit out of there. This is possibly where the leak was coming from. Oil did come out when I removed that seal, so I'll just have to clean all this up. But I'll do the crankshaft first before I clean it one more time. So I've just realised that the timing belt kit that I bought actually already has a camshaft seal and I'm assuming the other one will match the crankshaft seal. I bought them separately because um, it just said it was a timing belt and water pump but there's actually a lot more in there. We're going to apply some grease on this lip on the inside here to try and help it seal as well as slide on and then we're going to place it on, tap this socket to try and get it in square and evenly. It was about probably two mil recess, so anywhere in that sort of range, I think we'll be fine. The grease that we're using is a silicon paste. Uh, I've got a 34 mil, it's the largest one I've got. Ideally, you'd actually want something a little bit bigger than that. You wanna press on the outside as much as possible. Whatever else you can find around the house, a bit of PVC pipe that you cut off and use that to tap in. So with this, we just want a little bit. We don't wanna completely smother it. We don't want it all over the camshaft. We just want it to make a small seal and help this go into its position. All right guys, to see that, I started with this, which is part of a bull joint remover, and then I was tapping it in to finish it off, because you can't get a lot of leverage here. I changed out, got a little quarter inch drive. I worked on the areas that weren't as recessed, just to get it all nice and even. So if you look down one line, you can see the depth the whole way, but you can't really do that at the top. So I'll just run this around and check that the measurement doesn't change. So it's about one and a half, two mil in around the top there. Just gonna try to do up this camshaft sprocket. That is 88 Newton meters. Next is the crankshaft pulley. Just gonna try to get this sprocket off by wedging behind either a pry bar or a small flat blade. Then it'll be, with the oil seal, it'll be the same thing. When I drill a small hole into it, uh, you'll feel it give when you go through that first layer of rubber then I'll screw a 20mm bolt in and wedge that out with pliers. There we go, there's your crankshaft. Uh, pretty dirty, I'll give that a clean. So you've got a keyway there and that'll go back on with that mark straight to top dead centre. So you can just clean in between here with a brush or paper towels and just run down. So crankshaft sprocket. Uh, I'm not going to spray this, just wipe it with a paper towel. Get all the grit out. I've got most of it now, but there was bits of sand in the old sludgy oil in between these teeth, so you want to get rid of that. On the back side, you want to get the paper towel in this ring, drive your screwdriver in and work it around with the paper towel. That will get all the sludge out of there. So in the end, I hammered this in along the edge and wedged it out. And then I could use that screw to grip and pull. So we'll just match that with the new one, make sure they're the same. We'll clean in here and then we'll fit the new one. This is the internal lip. I've applied a thin layer of grease again. That's to help it slide in and form a seal. I'm gonna check in there, it's all clean and there's no damage from the drill bit. Hopefully no more oil comes out of here. Although I do think it was the camshaft seal more so than this one. So we're just gonna slide this on using whatever we can find to tap it on evenly. This isn't deep enough to go over this spigot. If I start hitting that, I'll just be hitting the spigot. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time. Using this blunt edge of a quarter inch, I'm gonna work my way around, tapping it around, and then making sure it's an even depth the whole way around, about one to two millimeters recessed. Mm -hmm. 